Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at another Kickstarter that I wasted my money on. This is called the Poto Camera, and it was designed to uh, replace the need for a selfie stick because you could take the camera and stick it to things like doors and windows and refrigerators and anything else you can imagine uh, and use it as a mountable camera so you can take your photos with your friends and not have to use an embarrassing selfie stick to do it. And it kind of accomplishes the goal of sticking to things quite well, but it doesn't accomplish the goal of being a good camera. And we'll talk uh, more about that in a minute. But I did want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I uh, paid for this with my own funds. It's about 100 bucks as you see it. I bought this off of Kickstarter back in March and it showed up this week. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So what the uh, Poto camera is here is a 8 megapixel camera along with a sticky surface here on the back uh, that's washable. So if you, uh, as you apply it to things, it gets less and less sticky, but all you got to do is apply some water to it and maybe take a little bit of tape and pull off some of the dust that it collects and then it is sticky once again. And I've been very impressed with how well it's been sticking to stuff. Uh, I've been just been washing it off a few times and it's good to go from there. Uh, they do caution that it's not a waterproof camera, so you want to be very careful about applying water to the back here, making sure it doesn't get onto the camera surface uh, in the process there. Uh, but very maneuverable little pad here. Now, in addition to having the sticky surface on here, it's also got a magnet on there as well. So when you stick it on something metal, you've got a magnet plus the sticky stuff uh, to keep it in place. Now, what's interesting is to turn it on, uh, you just tap it twice like so, and that will switch the camera on. It'll begin looking for your uh, phone via Bluetooth. It works with Android and iOS. You'll notice here as I turn it around, it's changing the camera orientation also, which is pretty cool. So it always keeps itself right side up uh, no matter which way you have it positioned. So that was a pretty neat little feature there. Charges via USB right over here with your computer or another USB charger. You only get about two hours of battery life, but it really doesn't matter because the camera is off most of the time. So the only time it turns on is when the app is active and ready to take a picture. Uh, so generally, if you're not taking a lot of pictures, it will last longer than two hours because uh, the camera will continually shut itself off and you often have to wait for the uh, thing to boot back up again to be able to start using it once more. Right, I have the app loaded up on my iPhone on the left and you can see the camera here in real time on the right. Uh, very slow to update as you're moving it around. So it's really good just for kind of setting up your shot and uh, getting everything ready to go, but really not great as a preview image. It's really very much delayed. Now to take a photo, I can just push the button down at the bottom there to take the picture and I want you to see how long this takes. Uh, it takes a really long time to transfer the photo from the camera to the phone. Now I have it in its 8 megapixel mode which is what it was marketed as uh, but they suggest actually running it at 3 megapixels and that uh, really doesn't matter because Instagram photos really don't look any better at 8 they say than they do at 3. I might differ with that opinion but I think if you've got an 8 megapixel camera uh, that's what you should be shooting at and unfortunately it takes a really long time to get a photo over and that transfer time was one picture so you can imagine if you're trying to get the right photo with your friends uh, you're going to be waiting a long time uh, to do something that takes just a split second on any smartphone with a selfie stick, I guess. So this is really not doing so great as a selfie stick replacement. I wasn't very impressed with the image quality either. You can see some sample photos here that I took earlier today. Uh, highly compressed, uh, really not great on the color side either. And I had a hard time focusing also. So it was very much out of focus a lot of times. You really have to get uh, kind of in the right position and hope that the focus is right uh, when you take the picture. And unfortunately, it's hard to uh, discern from the app here what's in focus or not because everything looks so blurry and a lot of times too you got to make sure you turn the camera back on here to get it uh, back up and running again so I did find that it was very uh, buggy just in the app and trying to get out of that mode after I moved the photos over to getting everything back up and running again so have not been impressed with the experience here overall uh, there is a flash available which is just going to light up the little ring on the front of the camera there so you have a little bit of a flash uh, there is a timer mode so I can have it uh, count down to take a picture so you can get everybody positioned properly and then say poto and have your uh, picture taken here I'll just cancel that transfer so I don't have to put you through that excruciating wait once again. Uh, now there is a video mode on here, however it is completely useless. It only shoots about 15 seconds of video and that's it. Uh, so I'll show you how that works. You just hit the button here and that's it. It's recording video right now at 720p. Uh, it does uh, put it in the right orientation so you never get vertical video, but the transfer rate, if you thought one photo was bad, uh, look at what seven or eight seconds of video takes to transfer over. And I, I did a full 15 second video earlier and it took minutes, like three to five minutes to get these videos transferred over to my phone wirelessly. So completely useless. And then uh, when it got to me, there's no audio at all. So there's really no point in taking a video in the first place, but uh, you can see what some of that video quality looks like. Again, not great, 720p. Uh, the sensor on this camera isn't all that great to to begin with, so it doesn't do well with stills, and it certainly uh, doesn't do all that well with video. The one thing that I did find interesting on it was this uh, time-lapse mode, uh, where you can kind of stick it in a corner and just have it take uh, pictures every so often and 
uh, a certain number of pictures every so often as well. So you can say like every four minutes and five seconds, take uh, five photos and it'll just keep taking pictures until it runs out of battery or it fills up its eight gigabytes of internal memory. So uh, you can set it up at a party and just have it kind of take pictures randomly all night and then transfer them all over to your phone and look at them later. However, you saw how long one photo took. Imagine what a whole bank of photos would take to transfer. I also found that I had to keep the phone alive so if the phone went to sleep, I would stop transferring everything and you'd have to start all over again. So really not a very good user experience and uh, this is definitely not a $100 product by any stretch. It does stick to things and that, at least it does that part pretty well, but uh, as a camera, it's really not that great. The image quality is lousy, horrible transfer times back to your phone. It would have been nice to maybe just have a memory card in here or something I could just take out and put in my computer later. It's really not a good experience at all uh, and certainly not a $100 product. I think this might be something that I spend $20 on maybe, but $100, forget it, especially having to wait a year and a half for it too. So I wish them luck, but uh, unfortunately this camera misses the mark. This is Lon Seibman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.